Hi, today I'm actually going to give you sort of a public service announcement about preventing diabetes. And part of this is because I'm doing a clinical trial known as D2D, looking at the use of vitamin D to prevent the progression to diabetes in people with prediabetes. And as the principal investigator on that trial, I look at all the patients when they come into the trial and I do a physical exam. And I want to point out that I'm doing this trial in East Los Angeles, which is a primarily Latino population in a poorer part of town in a building where I take care of patients who already have diabetes and frankly many of whom have not had access to good health care, so end up with many complications, as well as the patients that we're screening for enrollment into our diabetes prevention trial. And I can tell you that when I see the patients who come in for the prevention study, they look similar to the patients who I treat who have diabetes. They may be a little bit younger, but by and large, they look about the same. But when I take off their shoes and socks and look at their feet, it's unbelievable because these patients with prediabetes have normal feet. And I know this sounds odd, but I've spent my lifetime looking at the feet of people with diabetes, and I see the damage diabetes causes. I see the reduction in pulses, the abnormal nails, the disruption in foot architecture, the sort of red, slightly swollen look to a neuropathic foot. I see calluses. I see foot after foot that isn't really awful, but isn't normal. And when I look at the feet of these people with prediabetes, they have normal feet. Their feet aren't damaged yet. And I compare them when I'm working in clinic another day of the week when I'm seeing actual patients with diabetes, and their feet aren't right. They've had di diabetes damage, and you know that they're progressing to getting complications. Now, I tend to be an optimist in life, and I tend to think that we can prevent complications. But when I read these articles that are published that say maybe we shouldn't worry about diagnosing prediabetes because we're not going to reduce mortality by treating prediabetes, I say, yes, but look at the health. Look at health that we're going to help people maintain if we can diagnose this earlier and make sure they get appropriate care. And perhaps patients are never going to know what damage we're sparing them. Perhaps it's hard to know if your quality of life is better or worse for an event such as a foot ulcer that you're never going to have. But I can tell you as a clinician, I'm a real advocate of early diagnosis of diabetes, of diagnosing prediabetes, of providing education, of providing lifestyle programs. And I know that around the country, increasingly patients, uh, patients on Medicare, patients who have access to a YMCA, all over the country, we are seeing increasing funding for these kind of programs that can help people change their lifestyles to help prevent them from progressing to diabetes. And I really think that most people, when they find out that they have a problem, that they have a slight elevation in their blood glucose levels when their A1C is entering the prediabetes range, it really helps motivate them. And most of all, I want to keep them free from harm. So, in my own personal experience, being able now to compare and contrast what people look like when I examine them in this pre-diabetic state, it really further empowers me to want to go forth and encourage all of you to think about pre-diabetes, to work with your patients, to provide resources, to allow them to engage in a healthy lifestyle, and then treat with metformin or whatever other agents seem appropriate to help patients prevent either getting diabetes or to be sure you treat their diabetes early. Thank you. This has been Dr. Ann Peters for Medscape.